All right, thank you everyone for joining us tonight for the November 23rd, 2021 Board of School Directors meeting. I call this meeting to order, but we start with roll call. Ms. Deeroff. Present. Mr. Foos. Here. Mrs. Hogan. Present. Mrs. McWhorter. Here. Ms. Nyman. Here. Mr. Uptegrove. Here. Mr. Brophy. Mr. Hemingway. Here. I'm here. I didn't hear my name called, but I'm here. Okay, Ms. Nicola, do we have everybody accounted yes. for? Ms. Denon, right. sorry, Ms. Denon. That's okay. Okay, could we have a, uh, I'd like to take a moment for the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, following order, there is no pre uh, previous executive session. Leads us uh, down to public comment period number one. I don't believe anybody has signed up for public comment number one. Ms. Torsha, is that correct? That, that is correct, Mr. Hemingway, according to um, my last communication with Mrs. Kramer. Okay. Next, I'll be looking for a motion for the approval of the November 9th, 2021 Committee of the Whole Meeting Minutes. Hey guys, and just, just a heads up, again, I'm gonna try to, now that we're doing Zoom, again, it's hard to find hands up. So just bear with me. I don't take offense if anybody shouts out. Um, so we'll do the best we can to you know monitor. So you know just be patient. So I'm looking for that motion to approve McWhorter, our minutes. McWhorter moves. Okay. Dennis. Okay, Ms. McWhorter, and then a second from Ms. Denon. Any questions or comments from uh, from our board? Okay, not seeing any. Could we go to a vote, please? Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Mr. Foos. Yes. Mrs. Hogan. Mrs. Hogan. I'm sorry, my internet kicked me off for a minute. Where are we? I apologize. Uh, we are voting on the minutes. Oh, yes, thank you. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Miss Nyman. I'm going to abstain because I don't think we're following proper protocol for tonight's meeting. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Mrs. Mrs. Dina Cola, you must have me off the list already. Because oh, I didn't hear I'm my sorry. name called. No, Mrs. Denon, <laughs> I'm having some technical is issues. So I'm going from a previous meeting where you oh. were absent. I apologize oh, for right. that, Ms. Denon. Yes. Is that a vote of yes? Yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, sure. I'm sorry, Joe. That's okay. Okay, next we will have our, our senior spotlight students. Yep. Uh, Ms. Torsha. All right, thank you. Tonight we're gonna to be celebrating three of our seniors. Uh, the first student that we're going to be um, rec recommending uh, is Ryan Produsky. 
and Prodesky, I'm sorry, and he is being recommended by Mrs. Cassani. Uh, Ryan has overcome many obstacles in his four years at Boyertown Area Senior High School. He has matured into a driven young man who works very hard to achieve his goals and dreams. In the four years that I've known Ryan, he has grown exponentially, not only socially, but academically. Ryan continues to work hard um, as a senior and continually sets a great example for younger students. He plans to go to college after graduation with a focus on horticulture. It has been an honor and a pleasure watching Ryan grow over the last four years. Next, we're going to be honoring Morgan Anders and she is being recommended by um, Mrs. Foster. I have watched Morgan grow and mature over her high school career. Morgan has overcome several obstacles to her learning, but has persevered through it all. Morgan is very artistic, taking AP and dual enrollment art classes, along with a full academic schedule and part-time job. She keeps a positive attitude and always has a smile on her face. Morgan has been accepted to go to LaSalle University for a degree in marketing. I have no doubt that Morgan will be a successful will have a successful career in life, and I am super proud of the wonderful young lady that Morgan has grown to become. And next, we have um, Jessica Whitman that we are going to be uh, recognizing tonight. And Je Jessica is being recommended from Mrs. Spleen, who is one of our high school life skills teacher. Jessica is a returning senior and she will complete her, her education in June of 2022. While I have only known Jessica for three months to date because Mrs. Spleen is new to the classroom, it is a privilege to be her teacher. While uh, facing challenges both cognitively, verbally, and physically, Jessica brings light to our classroom. She befriends anyone who takes the time to get to know her. She craves inclusion and interaction. She stretches her brain to absorb as much as she possibly can. And Jessica loves dancing, games, and math, and reading class. It is a pleasure teaching and working with Jess. Those are our three students that are on our senior spotlight this evening. Thank you, Mr. Hemingway. Thank you very much, Ms. Torsha. Hey, uh, next we have a student representative report. Hey, Brandon, would you mind uh, introducing our, our uh, Olivia and uh, Sarah uh, to our meeting? Certainly. So uh, welcome Sarah Drakis, our senior student representative, and Olivia Brodowski, the junior student representative. They will be providing the board with a report about um, events happening in the elementary, middle, middle and high schools. All right, good evening, everyone. Um, Olivia and I are excited to focus and celebrate student activities this month. When we return, we, would hold, we will hold the next student leader luncheon in which we will discuss how prepared students are for life after high school and the impact the school's resources make on the student body. Also in the next student leader luncheon, we will discuss how students <laughs> feel about doing away with the class rank system. This student leader luncheon will be held when we return from virtual schooling, but since the initiative has not yet occurred for this month, we will not comment on student opinions on the matters discussed above. Perfect. Um, students are thrilled the snowball dance will be moving forward on December 17th and will be available to all students in the high school. Also, the student council has begun preparation for Wish Week. For anyone not aware, Wish Week is a week-long event that occurs before holiday break where students have the opportunity to wish for different things to occur and the student council works to grant those wishes. Moving forward, the class officers were elected for the class of 2026. Joseph Kummer was elected president. Deborah Villette was elected vice president, Hannah Ulrich was elected public relations, and Jamie Kelly was elected treasurer. We would like to congratulate everyone that was elected and looking forward to the positive impact you will have on the community. Also, to touch on recent events, students are excited to return to the building as soon as it is safe. We appreciate Boyertown's concern with student safety in our ever-evolving world and their initiative in taking extra precautions. All right, that is everything we have for you today. Thank you so much for your time and attention. We look forward to sharing more on the student leader luncheon at the next board meeting we are attending. Thank you, ladies. Thank you both and you guys enjoy your holiday. Thank you so much for, the, for, for your uh, report. Thank you, we hope you all enjoy as well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next we're gonna do a, a discussion uh, in our agenda, we have a program of study presentation. 
Uh, Ms. Torsha, I don't know who's, since we're all Zoom, who's actually presenting to us? Uh, Mr. Mr. Stout and Dr. Foley will be presenting the program of study to us this evening, and they are both here and ready to go. All right, fantastic. So, so Mike, so Mike, have at it. Okay, give me one second to do a screen share here. All right, so hopefully everybody's seeing a screen with the program of study. Okay, um, I, I, I look forward to this presentation every year. Um, we are excited about the program of study for the, um, it's hard to think about, but the 22-23 uh, the um, school year um, as we move forward. It's really important that we get ahead of uh, presenting the program of study to the school board and for later board approval tonight so that we can actually start planning for schedules and everything that goes along with uh, all of the the details that take that take place to plan for the upcoming school year. So um, it's, it seems like, oh my gosh, we're talking about the 22-23 school year already, but um, the high school, as soon as we get back from the winter break, really start that scheduling process. So uh, I am proud to present uh, Dr. Foley uh, with you tonight. There's the program of study for the most part is staying very consistent to our previous programs of study uh, with a couple additional uh, recommendations for classes. So Dr. Foley. Well, thank you very much. We appreciate it. And, and uh, just want to go over a few things with you tonight. Just to, again, as Mr. Stout has mentioned, the, the program of studies had a slight change this year just because of um, last year we did some other major moves in it. And so it's in pretty good shape. And we're going to try to add two more classes this year. And again, it is zero budget impact, just so you understand that. But we're going to look at some academic updates, the new course uh, program and, and the program of studies approval we're seeking for that and also the student uh, excellence and academic recognition. So you can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so to graduate from Boyertown High School, obviously we have to have 24, a minimum of 24 credits. And we'll kind of go over this in just a few seconds, but that's grades nine through 12. <clears throat> also all students must complete a career uh, portfolio. Uh, in this, within this project they do, this takes all four years to do this. And inside of those projects is where we do our career uh, basically, we, we use Smart Futures to try to look at career planning and, and options for students and what they need to do to be successful to make that plan happen. And also, this is where the financial literacy and those pieces are all figured into all of our students. So every student must do that. So the students that are at BCTC, their project is slightly different. All the Smart Future pieces are still the same because that follows the Act 339, as well as their presentation is, has to do with uh, basically the shop that they're in at BCTC. So it's really geared toward their, toward their program. Um, but as you can see, there are uh, 24 credits needed to graduate from Boyertown High School. Most of our kids graduate with between 26 and 28 credits and they're a specified numbers. So for example, on ELA, the language, uh, language arts, you have to have four credits. In the social studies, you have to have four credits. Science, you have to have three playing credits. Math is four. Just a couple caveats about that. If students are successful in the Algebra One course, the, the Keystone Algebra One course in the eighth grade, then that actually can count as one of their credits <clears throat> because that's a, a, a basically a high school level class. Um, also, we look at health, two, two plan credits for that. And we have four plan PE, uh, which equals two credits. They're, half, they're semester courses, but you have to have four of those. And then one planned language um, credit somewhere along the way. So it can be the conversational or it could be uh, for example, if students are successful with the level one and on up, then it can be any one of those to count as that planned course. And again, that totals 20 of the 24. And then, of course, we have a variety of electives that students would take to round out the rest of that. So that would be the minimum of 24. But like I said, most students graduate with about 26 to 28 credits. You can go to the next slide. And Dr. Fall, I just want yep. to point out that it's really exciting for the uh, senior project presentations uh, on or about the middle of October, and you'll see that in the calendar approval mm -hmm. for, for next year. We have all of our staff, um, teaching staff across the district, participate in the senior project presentation. So it's an exciting time for all teachers, K through 12, to see the, uh, the final product of where seniors are. It, and that's a powerful day. Uh, it, it's, it's really good for everybody to get to try to see those because the students will be honest about, hey, this really helped me. We need to do better here because we asked for that feedback and that's how we've continued to grow this program. And um, to even to a lot of the kids, when we talk about the digital driver's license, basically it's a digital footprint and how that tracks. They, they thought it was kind of juvenile at first, but over the course of their four years, they're saying, man, I'm really glad I did that. And of course the financial literacy, 
we get feedback from that. And the thing that they grow the most in is insurance. They just don't quite understand insurance like they should. And so part of the program we do in our financial package is also dealing with insurance. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mrs. McWhorter, are you okay waiting till the end? It's only about four slides. Okay, and I can come back to the slide. Cool. <clears throat> Okay, so we have a variety of AP and DE enrollment courses. So as you can see this year, this current core year, uh, course year, we have 525 seats in our AP classes. That's 327 students, individual students. Some of them are taking multiple classes. And we already have scheduled 521 AP exams for the end of the school year. We have 36 seats for the combined AP DE class. And what that means is students may choose either AP credit, DE credit, or they could actually choose both if they choose to. <clears throat> We have 511 seats filled in all of our DE classes. And the breakdown on that is, is we have 198 students earning uh, credits from Monco. So they're graduating high school with college credits. And approximately, and this changed by two students today. So we have 147 students earning Harrisburg University credits. Again, those are already earning credits as they're graduating high school. You can go to the next slide. So the variety of AP courses that we have, this is what we offer our students every year. Now, of course, there is a threshold that we, in order to be able to run a class, you know, we have to have so many students sign up for them. So some of them don't run every year, but the majority of our classes run every year because we have a large number of kids taking these AP courses. You can go to the next one. Um, our dual enrollment courses, they continue to grow. And you can see that we have a variety of courses from not only Monco Community College, but also from Harrisburg. And just so you understand that the kids take them here in this school, in this class, it's a scheduled class for them here. Our teachers act as adjunct professors for both Monco and for Harrisburg. So they go through a process where they apply for that and they become a professor for the, uh, the, for the college and the university. Part of the great discount that our kids get, they don't get receive any money from, for teaching these courses. They just have, it's part of their normal schedule, our teachers. However, our students can earn uh, credit for a very, very reduced uh, price for, per credit. So most of the time the credits are around hundred dollars. So that's really cheap in these, uh, in today's economy, so. You can go to the next one. The two new courses that we're going to add this year, if we can get approval through our ELA, it's going to be an elective for our English students um, and through our English department. And it's called Theater and Stagecraft One. So here they're going to do things like drama, play scripts, playwriting. Um, and as you know, when you go to see a movie or a play, part of that whole process is the stagecraft. So what does the scenery look like? What does the set look like? So there's a whole bunch of pieces that go into this. And sometimes it can be very simple and sometimes it can be very complex. But this is one of the first offerings that we're looking for, uh, uh, seeking approval for that. And then the other one is, is the academic conservation science. Now this curriculum was provided to us, the majority of, us say, of the curriculum was provided, uh, provided to us by the Department of Natural Resources from Pennsylvania. So it's talking about wildlife game management, fish management, and more importantly, the resources such as the land management and the water management that goes along with supporting all of the wildlife that we have in Pennsylvania. Um, and again, this curriculum is, is ready to go. And again, both curriculums are here and it's a zero budget impact. Um, just kind of on a side note, I don't think we've ever added this before, but I thought it would be interesting for you to understand what happens. So in addition to all of the AP offerings that you saw and all the DE offerings that you've seen, um, you, can, you can see we have currently uh, uh, 181 academic and honor classes that we offer all of our kids. Any kid in the school is welcome to take. In addition to that, even, we have seven career clusters at BCTC, the Berks Career and Technology Center, that have 34 different offerings that our students take advantage of. And we send the largest uh, group of students to the Current and uh, Technology Center than any other school district in, in Berks County. So we're very proud of that and what the kids are doing there. And it's amazing the work that they're doing there. So you can go to the next slide. So obviously this was in the program of studies last year. We just carried it over this year. The reason we felt it was important to be in there last year was because it affected those current eighth graders, which is now this current year ninth graders. So looking at the recognition for the Val and LaSalle and align the honor system with the criteria for the policy of uh, 214, providing that it gets approved. And then we would look at the Latin system with cum laude, the magna cum laude, and summa cum laude, which is the decile system for 10, 20 percent percentile. So um, that's the presentation. And I know there's a couple of questions that you may have. So you feel free to ask me or Mr. Stout. So I'd like to open the floor up. Yeah, Mr. Um, Stout, I would like, uh, you have the capabilities of seeing whose hands are raised. I so, do. Uh, and I saw, yeah, I, I see. Don't uh, think uh, you just say it, just, just take it over. Okay. <laughs> Thank, 
Thank you. Um, I will. I will see. I think uh, Mrs. McWhorter, you had your hand up first. Yeah. So I just have a couple questions and a couple comments. One, the career portfolio. That's still a state requirement. Yes, it is. Okay. Um, that's a great selection of the AP classes and dual enrollment. I'm I'm so glad that we offer these um, so that our kids don't get bored. Um, and then I really like the the last two offerings or the two new offerings, especially the conservation science, as it's something out of the ordinary that I think that if kids are thinking about going in that direction, that they can look at a, a conservation science, you know, if they're going for a wildlife ranger or or something like that, uh, that's a good way to to start that. So I really like that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Denon, I believe I saw your hand up. You're muted. Sorry, thank you. Just a couple of questions. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm excited about the additional new, new course offerings and I'm assuming that they're cost neutral because they're gonna be taught by um, someone in our music department or theater department and then also someone in our science department. Yeah, actually the theater and stagecraft is gonna be taught by someone in our English language arts section. Um, currently runs the drama club and some other stuff. So it's just a, a, an additional course that you can look at script rights, you know, playwrights, all that kind of stuff, as well as all the pieces go with it. Okay, great. Yep. And, and um, when, when you take an elective, you, you get a credit for that, correct? Yes, absolutely. If you remember, we, you, there are 20 that are required that students must take. And then you have to have 24 to graduate. So there's already four credits of electives that you can choose to build in. And yes, these are electives and they count as credits. And that's why we have a lot of students graduating with a lot more than 24 credits because they also take other courses like these, for example, that will count as an elective course. Okay. And um, I apologize, I missed the meeting on the 9th. So I must have missed the discussion about the valedictorian and the salutatorian. So I, I'm just a little bit confused. Are we... Um, the last discussion, I think the presentation that Dr. Foley made was that um, one of the reasons for, for not having the, the valedictorian, the salutatorian was some undue stress and they didn't want kids just taking courses just to, to up their GPA. So are we now going to um, still have a valedictorian, a salutatorian, but not have it be a speech or, or what? I, I, under, I know that Mr. Brophy had, had some reservations about it and I'm sorry I missed the last meeting, but I just wanna know what, so what is the policy actually going to say now? Um, I can pull up the policy here, Dr. Foley. <laughs> I was proactively, I had, it, I had it ready to go in case there are any questions. Um, so we're on the second reading tonight, Mrs. Denon. And um, I'm assuming you can see the policy, can you? Yes. Yeah. I, okay. yeah, I, yeah. I just want to make sure. So you stop right um, there. Yep. Right down here on the, the top of the second page. Um, and it's just a reminder that for the class of 2025, so for the next three classes, it's going to be uh, status quo. But we did add back in that the valedictorian and salutatorian recognition uh, and or awarding of the awarding of financial aid when required by requesting institution, we are going to still have that behind the scenes. And um, everybody, every year there's a committee for the senior class that kind of plans graduation. And part of that graduation process on that particular year, we'll be talking about the ability for students to, to speak. Um, to Dr. Foley's point um, before that it, it creates um, sometimes a lot of angst that some students don't wanna do that. So um, in the future, we, we were going to give uh, the, the valedictorian in the cell uh, some prioritized uh, thoughts about that, but let the committee of the senior class that particular year kind of coordinate the uh, the graduation service itself, because every year it kind of takes a little bit of a different spin based upon what that committee comes up with. But the SAL and the the VAL would still have um, some prioritized you know thoughts in the decision making process. Okay, so we're still going to um, designate them, and it's going to be solely based on their class, their GPA, and their. The, the class rank and the GPA is one and two. Correct. Yes. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Are there any other questions? I didn't see any other hands up in the uh, chat box. I do not see any other hands as well, Mr. Stout. 
Okay. Well, thank you everybody for your uh, time tonight. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Mr. Foley. Thank you. Sorry about that, guys. I was on mute. I wanted to say thank you, Dr. Foley and Mr. Stout for that presentation. Uh, that moves us next to our financial update. Uh, Ms. Danicola, the floor is yours. Hey, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to share a financial update of our 2020-21 year. Um, these amounts are subject to audit, which is currently ongoing, um, but they um, will be audited and then a final will be reported to the board at a future date. Um, I'm also going to present the 2022-23 budget timeline. For 2020-21, we had a budgeted revenue of $123,670,398. We actually collected revenue of $125,996,186. In large part, the increase was due to um, higher than expected real estate tax collections. Um, for our expenses, we had a budget of $124,856,841. We experienced expenses of $124,704,376. So the preliminary 2020-21 increase in fund balance, which again is subject to audit, is $1,291,810. <laughs> As far as our revenues go, our largest revenue again comes from local sources. We had 86.8 million um, collected against a budget of 84.9 million. State revenue made up 37.8 million of our revenue and we budgeted 36.7. Federal revenue, we had um, budgeted 1.9, but we ended up only um, utilizing grant sources of 1.3. Um, that in large part is due to um, CARES money that we will be able to use in um, this current fiscal year. As far as our expenses, our expenses again continue to be largely based on salaries and ben benefits, which made up 66% um, of our spending. Um, our other purchase services of $16,504,216, that in includes our transportation costs, it includes um, cyber and charter school costs, it includes um, a myriad of other purchase services, but the largest things are going to be transportation and our charter school costs. You'll see those included in that number. You will see from a supplies perspective, um, we spent you know, a little bit less than budgeted, so we were very frugal in our spending. Um, we did um, throughout the year put forth a spending freeze, and I think we see the effect of that um, within our supply spending that we um, had decreased that from budget. As we look to 2022-23, the Act 1 index, the base index has been released by the state. It is 3.4%. Our adjusted index is 4.2%. What that means is we can raise taxes up to an adjusted index of 4.2%. You will see that our adjusted index has grown um, since 2012-13. 2012-13, we were at a 2.1% index. Now we were at a 4.2% um, adjusted index. The main decision points that we would need to make throughout the budget planning to adhere to PDE guidelines is we would need to either by January 27th, adopt a resolution that the district will not raise taxes above the index. What that would do is it would allow us to raise taxes up to 4.2%, but not go above. Or in lieu of that, we could adopt a preliminary budget by February 16th. That would give us the flexibility to raise taxes beyond the 4.2% if we qualified for any exceptions. Then on May 31st, we need to adopt the proposed final budget and then adopt our final, our proposed final, and then by June 30th, adopt the final budget. So the timeline basically the same um, as last year. We will have some um, finance committee meetings, um, obviously leading up throughout June 30th. Uh, the meetings in December, we you know can discuss the resolution regarding not raising taxes above the index or moving towards the um, preliminary budget approval. If you would adopt the resolution, you would simply adopt the resolution, then your next formal step would be adopting the proposed final budget. 
but throughout that process, um, as we did last year, we would have continued budget discussion discussions um, and many, many presentations regarding the budget. Um, that's all I have for the um, financial summary. Um, I think the year closed out um, pretty well. I was largely encouraged by our revenue generation. Um, it's gonna be hard for me to speak to why something might've been budgeted one way, but we collected more as I didn't build the budget for 2020, um, 21. However, I can tell you that the real estate tax collections um, came in very strong. So the community um, definitely showed their support to the district. Ms. Danicola, I don't know if you have the capability of seeing if anyone has their hands raised. So I, I would like to propose to you the same as I did with Mr. Stout. Yeah. If anybody has their hands raised, you know, you just take, take the call. I can look. I don't see any hands raised from my end. I don't end. see any either at this point. Okay. Uh, from the board, are there any questions or comments for Ms. Danicola? Okay. I'm not seeing any. So, so Ms. Danicola, thank you very much for that presentation, that update. And uh, I, I guess we'll keep working. Thank you. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, next in line for our agenda, I have a report of the president. I'm actually gonna make a few comments. I'm gonna save myself for last, if that's okay. Uh, it would bring us to our secretary's report. No report this evening. Next would be our solicitor's report. No report this evening. Okay, that brings us to our superintendent's report, Ms. Torsha. I just have a couple of words that I would um, like to share. I, I would like to take a moment to thank our outgoing school board directors, Mrs. Denon, Mr. Foos, and Mrs. McWhorter for their years of service to the Border Town Area School District. Um, uh, I would like to send sincere appreciation to each one of you for your time, your dedication to serving your community and your commitment to public education. And on behalf of the administration, thank you. And we wish you all the best. We did have, um, or we do have uh, gifts uh, to bestow upon you. They will be coming to you shortly. That completes my part of my report, Mr. President. Okay, well, that leads us right back into, uh, you're still on the floor here. So, uh, right. Superintendent's report as far as consent agenda okay. and itemized agenda and all that good stuff. All right. So, you're still up. Okay, so I would like to present the second reading um, of policy 214 for approval and adoption this evening. So, I am looking for the um, <clears throat> school board directors to approve policy 214 class rank for second reading approval. Um, and uh, looking for a motion. It's okay to call out. Second. Zero, please. Oh, goodness. Okay, I heard Ms. Deeroff moves, and I believe it was Roger or yeah. Mr. Grobe that I heard as a second. Is that fair? Yes. Yes. And, right. Okay, since we are consent, let's go right to a vote then. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Ms. Nyman. I am going to abstain again for the same reason I had earlier. Mr. Uptegrove. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Mrs. Hogan. No. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Motion carries. All right, next we have under the superintendent's report under the itemized agenda, we have the program of studies and um, we will be looking uh, here for the board of school directors to approve the 22-23 program of studies for grades six through eight and grades nine through 12. McWhorter moves. Mr. Upgrove will all right, I have, a, I, have a first, I have a first by Mel, and would it be Mr. Updegrove second? I believe, I, we, I believe we had Ms. Hogan as second. Oh, okay, we'll go with Ms. Hogan then, if that's what you heard, Ms. Yep. Torsha. Okay, any, any comments or discussion? Okay, not seeing or hearing any. Let's go to a vote, please. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Ms. Nyman. 
I'm going to abstain again for the same reason. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Ms. Deroff. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. <laughs> Mrs. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Motion carries. Next, we have presented the, um, or, or next up on the itemized agenda is the school district calendar for the 22-23 school year. Um, that calendar that we are, or this calendar that we are presenting um, is almost identical to the current school year. We are looking to start school um, beginning on August the 22nd um, for the first day of school. We will be ending school right around June uh, 2nd, providing that the winter is good. The, the days off are um, all the same, same with our professional development days. There really um, is not any kind of a, a change in the um, calendar that we are presenting this evening for the 22-23 school year. So I will be looking for the, the Board of School Directors to approve the 22-23 um, Boyer Town Area School District, School District Calendar as presented. Hogan moves. Denon seconds. Okay, I have a Hogan and a Denon. Any uh, questions, comments, concerns? Mr. Hemingway, I think uh, Mrs. Nyman's hands up. Okay, Ms. Nyman, yeah, I know you, you did request this to be a, a move to an itemized agenda, so uh, the floor is yours. Yes, I was sad to see that it was put on the consent agenda to begin with since we had no discussion on this. Um, several questions, one being um, the Burke's Career Technology. When does that start? That starts the um, following day, the, the day after we start, I believe the 22nd. It, it allows us to have the high school students in on Monday to go through all of the health exams that we do without them missing any time at the Berks Career and Technology Center. And then Berks Career and Technology Center starts the very next day. Okay, because that was always, they started after us by a week or more. So that mm, was not, one concern. Not typically, I'm sorry. Not, not typically, I, uh, Mr. Uh, Dr. Foley could speak to that, um, but I'm pretty sure we're starting right around the same time as them. Yeah, in past, they've actually started before us. So we always yeah, had to bring those later. kids in and transport them in. Yeah. This way we have them that first day, which is real critical so that we can get through all of their processes without them missing any of their shop. And then the next day they actually start in the BCTC. So it works out really well. And I have concerns from parents because we're starting so early and they have vacations in that plan. I mean, originally when we were starting after Labor Day, we had complaints and now we agreed to go the week before. Now we're going two weeks before. So it's, it's kind of out of control here a little bit. Um, so kids are gonna be missing school anyway. I, I don't understand why we need to start so early. Again, we're, we're trying to stay aligned with the Berks Career and Technology Center. And because they're starting on August the 23rd, we're starting that Monday, the 22nd. And again, um, it's really to you know, support the students so that they don't miss any time at the Career Center so that we can get through the, um, the school-wide health screenings that we do. Any more comments, Ms. Nyman? No, that was it. Okay, I, anyone else who would like to make a comment or question? Not seeing anyone, let's, uh, we'll, we'll go Mr. to a vote. Mr. Hemingway, oh, I, I see well, well, Mrs. Hogan's hand. I'm sorry, I'm glad you can see these screens. That's okay, I have the whole screen up. So Mrs. Hogan, I believe has, a, has her hand up yet. I'm sorry, hey. Lisa, go ahead. I'm no, it's sorry. okay, thank you. No, I appreciate it. Um, so I just wanted to say that, you know, as a parent, I, I hate that school starts on August 22nd, to be honest, but um, I appreciate Dr. Foley and Mrs. Torsha explaining why that is. And after hearing that explanation, I think it makes a lot of sense why we're doing that. And um, it'll make it a little easier for me when I have to 
send my kid back on the 22nd. So thank you. <laughs> but the good news is, is that you're done June 2nd. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Silver linings. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. All right, Mr. Hemingway, I think you're, you might be clear now. All clear. Now, I think it's a well thought out articulated calendar. I'm sure it's tough making those decisions to pull kids back in, <laughs> you know, um, uh, but I have confidence that, mm -hmm. that that you guys are doing what we feel is right to stay in this to stay in line with uh, our school year. So, with that being said, I like to take it to a vote. Mrs. McWhorter. Yes. Miss Nyman. And I will abstain again for the same reason. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Mrs. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Motion carries. All right, and lastly, I have the personnel agenda and that the Board of School Directors approve the personnel agenda as presented. Carol Foose. McWhorter seconds. Okay, any questions, comments from, from the board? Mel, I see your hands up, is that true? No. Okay. Um, I don't see my hand up. All right, well, I apologize. <laughs> That's okay. All right, if anybody has anything, just shout out. If not, we're gonna go to a vote. Mrs. Okay, McWhorter. Yes. Ms. Nyman. Abstain for the same reason. Mr. Updegrove. Yes. Mrs. Denon. Yes. Ms. Deeroff. Yes. Mr. Foose. Yes. Mrs. Hogan. Yes. Mr. Hemingway. Yes. Motion carries. That completes my um, report this evening. Okay, thank you, for, thank you very much. Uh, that brings us to old business. I don't believe we have any old business that we need to deal with. So uh, that'll that'll move us right into uh, public comment period number two. Um, I, I do believe that we do have uh, individuals signed up. I do need uh, to read. Uh, we've heard this before. Uh, uh, bear with me. I'm going to read it again. Uh, on behalf of the school board, uh, school board of school directors, I would like to welcome you to this meeting. Uh, we welcome your attendance and input from stakeholders to assist us with making recommendations and decisions related to the Boyertown Area School District. The procedures and rules for public participation are detailed in BASD Board Policy 006. This document is available at the meeting and at the BASD website. Participants properly registered on the sign-up sheet will be recognized by myself. Public comment period number two is for those persons wishing to discuss an item not appearing on the evening's agenda. Participants must preface their comments by an announcement of their name, address, and group affiliation if that is appropriate. All statements, inquiries, or comments shall be directed to myself. No participants may address or question board members, individually administrative team members individually, school employees, or members of the public individually. Note that we value and will not compromise the privacy of our students and staff. Please see us outside the realm of the public meeting if you have a concern about an indiv individual staff member or student. If your public comment includes a question, Ms. Torsha or a member of her staff will be in contact with you to confirm your question and provide you with the information. Comments are limited to three minutes and comment periods are limited to 30 minutes. Finally, Note that we do record our board meetings and committee meetings, and we post them on YouTube with a link to our website. We request that if you wish to take pictures or record the meeting yourself, you do so in a non-disruptive and discreet manner and use those materials respectfully and responsibly. Thank you very much. Now I have a list. Now, Allison, I imagine these, uh, 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 people are in our waiting room. Would you have Cassandra Rooney? Would she be up first? Is that how I'm going in this list that I that I received? 
That's correct. Yes. And they have all been admitted to the Zoom meeting. So all five speakers are into the meeting. Okay. All right. That's great. Thank you very much. So uh, Ms. Rooney, uh, welcome to our meeting and thank you for your comments. Uh, you, you, you're you up. Okay. Thank you. Um, so hopefully you can hear me. Uh, my name is Cassandra Rooney. I live on Manitoni Drive in Pottstown. Um, as you all know, uh, December 4th, the mask order becomes null and void. And to quote the attorney in the case, um, after 12-4 passes, the vast majority of school districts will revert to some sort of mask optional plan. For the ones that don't, the open legal question is whether individual school districts have the authority to require masks. Considering that the Secretary of Health does not have the authority under the disease prevention and control law, my argument would be that no school district has the authority to require masks under the public school code. I suggest letting the district, uh, letting the dust settle and on 12-4, but if your school district continues to require masks, I believe we have the ability to bring legal action challenging that power. Um, I would consider that somewhat of a warning. Um, it seems quite timely that our superintendent would close the high school and one grade at the elementary right as the mass litigation is taking its course. Um, you did ask us all to be thankful for something. I am thankful for the ability to vote, speak on behalf of my community, and I'm thankful for all the amazing parents that I've met during these trying times. Um, to quote your board operating guidelines, um, respect each other, listen attentively, no side conversations, silence your cell phones and put them away during the meetings. Strive to see how diverse opinions, knowledge and skills can be a source of strength and not division. Are you all doing this? Based on my experience since June, it's a solid no. And to quote your policy manual local board procedures under emergency conditions section, in the event that the county, state, or federal public health authorities, the governor, or any similar authority with appropriate jurisdiction declares an emergency condition that prevents or discourages public gatherings due to public health or safety concerns, the board shall be authorized to conduct meetings primarily or entirely via electronic communications to enable all school directors and other necessary participants to fully participate in the con con conduct of official business through electronic communications. Meeting held primarily or entirely via electronic communication shall be, shall be conducted in a manner that ensures compliance with public access and public comment requirements of the Sunshine Act. The requirement for school directors to submit notice to participants in meetings through electronic communications and limit the participation shall be waived during such emergency conditions. Are we currently in an emergency? Why is this meeting virtual and not in person? I've already asked this by email. No additional tax increase because greed is an ugly thing and you guys are getting tons of money already. 30 seconds. I urge the board to, to act ASAP and take the power back from our communist abuser superintendent. Out with the old and in with the new. Thank you for your service. We are happy to see you three go. And honestly, we can't wait for an exciting new opportunity for a positive and productive board with the power to save our children's dignity and education. Thank you very much. Ms. Vilks, you are up next. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nicole Zelks. I am a Boyertown resident. Um, I do wanna mention that no board member gets paid for their service. They're 100% volunteers. So any misconception that anybody has that they're paid for their service, they're 100% for all. Um, I'm gonna start off um, by reading a email that I sent to the board on November 3rd. I haven't received one response from a board member in regards to this email. I did have one private conversation with a person um, who is a board member. Um, but outside that, I haven't received one response. So to make sure that uh, my email is was read or my, me my voice is being heard, I'm going to read it at this meeting. I would like to address with the board and the superintendent a conversation I had with a board member. This board member engaged me in a conversation after she saw me speaking to a fellow community member by telling me that I am the one that is spreading hate. I reminded this board member 
that I've been speaking out against hate. I've done this multiple times at board meetings. Her response to me was that if I didn't make such a big deal about things, they would go away. Is this the, the thinking of a majority of the board? Do, we, do you really believe that if a problem is ignored, it will just go away? I assume that that is not, I assure you that is not how it works. Hate does not go away because you ignore it or pretend that it does not exist. This board member also told me, and to quote, we are good people here. And if you don't like it, you can move back to Philly. Is this how a board member should speak to a constituent or any community member? I've lived here for 18 years. I own a home. I pay taxes. I raise my son here. I'm just as much a part of this community as anyone else, including those members in the community that were born here. This statement claiming that I'm not part of the we is concerning and both and it's concerning that this was said to me by 30 seconds. a community member and to one of her constituents. To the outgoing board members, I wanna thank you for serving the community, for backing up your decisions you have made and your voting record with facts and data. All three of you have always held conviction that public school education is important and your voting record has shown that the education and safety of the students has always been your top Three priority. Minutes. Thank you for all of you have tried to do to make not only this district, but the community a better place. Okay, hey, Christy Hart, you are up next. Hi, I'm here, sorry. I'm going to come on. I have some bad lighting, but um, so hi, I just, I'm Christy Hart. I am um, on Westview Drive in Perky Omenville. I just want to um, say thank you very much to Mrs. Denon, um, to Mrs. McWhorter, and to Mr. Foos. Um, I am relatively new to the um, board meeting to the community. I have a young child in the district, um, so all of this uh, came to light for me this year. Um, so unfortunately, I haven't had the opportunity to get to know everyone better than I have this year. Um, but I feel that in what I've seen, I've been very impressed um, with Mrs. Denon and Mrs. McGorder and Mr. Foose. And I just want to thank you so much for always having our kids' best interest at heart. Um, I feel like your votes have always been based very much on facts and data and science. And I very much appreciate that you have put forward effort in the community and also in the school district to make it um, a positive place for our kids to go and for our kids to be um, in the district. Um, I also just want to say that um, I do want to thank Ms. Torsha for um, making some calls that I guarantee have not been easy. Um, you've definitely, and as a board, gotten a lot of pushback for the decisions that you've made. Um, but I also just want to put on public record that my family fully supports you and your decisions. Um, we believe in science. We believe in masks. We believe in vaccinations. And uh, we trust that the decisions you're making to um, you know, go virtual for a couple weeks or close a classroom or whatever is in the best interest of the teachers, the kids, the staff, the drivers. And I thank you for that. Um, and I will continue to support that and hope that you continue to make those good decisions. Um, so, and just in closing, um, I wanna say in watching the schedule offerings for 2022, um, I really love the fact that you're offering practical and also um, just learning because we know that every child learns differently and not every student is um, able to sit in an honors classroom and, and do honors math. Uh, some of them want to do science and animal studies and woodland studies and all of that. So I commend uh, the forward thinking in being able to get the kids some things that may not be traditional. So that's all. Thank you very much. Oh, and there's my youngin. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right, thank you very much for your comments. Erin Maximilian, you are up next. Hi, uh, my name is Erin Maximilian. I'm a resident of Douglas Township, Montgomery County. I'd like to address the issue of masking. As you are aware, the Commonwealth Court recently ruled that the mask mandate was unlawful. The stay was also removed, although now, even though the ruling was that the mask mandate was unlawful, we're in some sort of masking purgatory until December 4th. In the district's original health and safety plan for this school year, masks were optional as they should be. Masking is a health choice that should never be mandated by schools or the government. Health choices should always be up to the parents. My question to you is this, what does the district plan to do about this issue come December 4th? The masking order has been declared void ab initio and unenforceable. That means that the order was never valid, neither was any enforcement. What steps are you going to take to resolve the unlawful enforcement of the Department of Health order? What is your position on masking going to be after December 4th? One of the top lawyers in our state who has successfully dealt with these issues in court is recommending that school boards take action now to resolve the unlawful enforcement. Taking proactive steps now is likely to prevent lawsuits and save tens of thousands of dollars of taxpayers' money in legal fees. The lawyer gives the following recommendations as to what school boards should do. Number one, apologize. Number two, welcome all students masked and unmasked back to in-person classroom instruction. Three, offer an individual assessment of learning deficits for affected students. Four, offer free or low cost tutoring. Five, consider running a free or low cost summer enrichment program. Six, make sure counseling is readily available. Seven, expunge disciplinary or attendance records of affected students. And eight, repeatedly promote activities that show school unity. Assemblies, pep rallies, school musicals, concerts, et cetera, will all help to bring the community back together. The board should have a chance to act after the masking order is lifted before legal action is filed against the district. This is a critical time in the lives of our students and community. Guidelines from government agencies are just that, guidelines. They are not laws, they are suggestions. I'm sure you feel obligated to do something. And yes, you do have to do something. That something is not switching to virtual schooling. That something is standing up and saying, no, we are not closing our schools when a few of our students are sick. Multiple students are out sick every day from a variety of illnesses, some contagious, some not. COVID is something that we need to learn to live with seconds. and not run from. It's time to support medical choice and not tyranny. If the school board continues to make masking mandatory after the Department of Health order has been lifted, lawsuits are inevitable. I encourage you to stay ahead of this and go back to making masks optional for all students and teachers alike. Thank you. Okay, next we have Heather Stamen, you are up. Um, I live in Gilbertsville, Douglas Township. First, I would like to thank the um, three outgoing school board members for their service, dedication to serving the students and our community. I appreciate your professionalism, being informed about the issues within our school district, fulfilling your duties as a school director and advocating for public education. Second, I would also like to thank the administration for continuing the use of masks as a mitigation strategy to prioritize the health and safety of our students, staff, and entire school community. It's really difficult to see that our numbers of cases are over 100 just for the month of November, which has been higher than any other month this school year. Um, and finally, um, I would like to speak to the remaining board members and newly elected board directors. I would like to remind everyone that your duty as a school director is to be the strategic governing body, one that see, oversees the district from a 30,000 foot view. We have a very qualified team of administrators and educators who are responsible to teach and support our students in a thriving learning environment. As a board member, you play a, bit of, a vital role in keeping our schools on track, always with the students' best interest in mind. Your ultimate goal is to improve our schools while empowering the professional staff with the proper resources and authority to ensure the policies and plans are implemented across the district. Research, research has shown that board behaviors can lead to, student, to poor student performance, things like micromanagement, disarray, distractions, miscommunication, and a disconnect within the community. As some of you continue your term or begin a term, I would like to share the five key functions of a good school board. One, 
to set a strat or set a vision that has a high expectations for quality education that supports strong student outcomes. Two, advances policy. Three, demonstrates accountability that you, as a school director, share responsibility with education for the performance of our schools and students. Four, play a leadership role in the community by listening to and responding to concerns of the entire school community. While you are elected in a region, you ultimately represent every single individual who lives within the Boyertown Area School District. Number five, forge consensus with faced issue, when faced with issues that bring a diversity of strong opinions and belief. The board's goal should remain the same, pursue consensus, reconcile differences, and reach compromises. I hope that in the upcoming meetings that you focus on the issues that are actually occurring in our schools, what you are ultimately responsible for as a school director and what you cannot change, that you engage with all members of our community and dedicate your service as a school director to focus on what is best for our students, their education, and to prepare them for their lives after graduation. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Heather. Next in our order, what will bring us to board comments. I wrote down the listing of how I want to do this. The, the, the three that are uh, that are going to be leaving our board, I'm going to save you for last. I hope that's okay. Um, so how I, and I'm going to save, actually, I'm going to save myself for last. But those three will be above. Lisa or Miss Hogan, you know what? I'm going by first names. That's how I know everybody. We're going by first names from here on out. Lisa, are you okay going first? I am. Thank you, Brian or Mr. Hemingway. <laughs> um, <laughs> so first, I just I wanted to congratulate the seniors highlighted in tonight's senior spotlight. Um, you know, as always, it's so great to hear these stories and hear about the accomplishments of our students. So congratulations to them. And since we are approaching the holiday that is all about gratitude, I wanted to say thank you to our teachers, to our administrators, to the bus drivers, to all the support staff from the janitorial staff to the cafeteria staff and everyone who comes in every day and works so hard um, to make our schools run. I really appreciate all that you do. So thank you. Um, I wanted to thank Mr. Stout, Dr. Foley, and Ms. Denicola for your presentations tonight. They were informative, and I really appreciate that. Um, I wanted to thank Mrs. Torsha for being vigilant about student and community health and for taking steps to help um, keep students in school. So basically, you know, I think we're kind of experiencing a, a time here where we can slow the spread and create a, a reset so that we can come into December healthy and um, ready to learn, which is really exciting. So thank you. Um, I wanted to thank Jill, Brandon and Mel for your service, your dedication to the district, um, for how, you know, how you've mentored me. I appreciate that. And for making informed data informed decisions. So I really appreciate all that you have done and, the, and your leadership. Finally, um, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And I hope everyone has a safe and healthy holiday. So I guess I will see you all in December. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Happy Thanksgiving. Next, uh, Ms. Nyman. Yes. Um, are you there? Hello? Hello. Uh, my screen just went sunny. Are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Last week, I sent out an email to Mrs. Torsha and Mr. Hemingway and Mr. Sultanic because I did not believe tonight's meeting was proper. Only because under our policies, and if you go to policy point uh, 006.1, emergency conditions. And I'm not gonna read it to you because prior to this already, somebody else did read theirs. But uh, according to this, only the governor, federal public health authorities have the authority 
to make this an emergency condition. We are not in emergency condition. We took that go the governor's edicts away back in May when we uh, voted. So that's no longer there. There is no federal, county, state health authority to be doing a Zoom meeting. This meeting tonight should have been done in person. I have not looked into uh, the Sunshine Law. I've only been going through our policies and we are not complying by our policies with this meeting tonight, which is why I abstain from voting on anything tonight. Now I will say Friday after I got an email back from Mr. Sultanic, he advised me to contact Mrs. Torsha. And I sent her a text, did not hear back from her until Monday while I was at work. Well, Monday night, I already had obligations and could not get back to her. So here I am tonight. And I was gonna try to speak at the first public comment period so we could get this all straightened out. So we could have had a meeting tonight and have it be legit. My concern right now is anything we voted on probably is worthless if we go by our policies. So I'm concerned. We vote on policies, but yet we don't abide by them. Can somebody please explain this to me? I would like an explanation. And I'm in Am this I meeting. Why, this, well, you asked for, for an explanation. I'll tell you. This, this meeting was discussed with our council. The venue of this meeting is not debatable. I can understand your reservations and I appreciate your your actions and if you want to abstain. But it was it was dealt reasonable that this meeting be gone to to Zoom under our circumstances that are going on in our community to keep us safe. That is my main concern, to keep this community, our students, and most my board safe. I'm sorry you have a problem with this. But that was a decision that I made, president of this board, under review of council. That was the decision that was made. I'm sorry you disagree, but it was final. That's enough said. Well, we're not following policy, so I guess we need to do something about that. Not debatable. It, it can be if uh, legal is, is um, charges filed against us. Ms. Nyman, you you are, have every right to do whatever you feel is fit. Are you done with your comments for the evening? I'm a little appalled by your attitude. Well, I take offense to yours. Had you contacted me, we could have resolved this. There was an easily method to this. And it would not have necessarily been to cancel the meeting, but there were other avenues if you would read the policies. So with I'm that. Be... No, go ahead. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. Are you content with your comment? No, because you interrupted. I'm, I'm tired of that. Very disrespectful. Hey, I apologize. I didn't mean to interrupt. I thought that you were uh, in the midst of being done. I'm not here to argue with you. We, we are colleagues on this board. We have a lot to get done. I'm not going to argue over whether the venue of the meeting is well, in person or, or, or needs to. Okay. Review. Well, you know what? I consult. I consulted our legal counsel. I, 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 go, go ahead, Chris. I'm sorry. Continue. You let me know when you're done. Legal counsel needs to review policy 006.1. And in there, it states there is no virtual meetings unless you meet certain criteria. We have not met that criteria. OK, that's Thank your interpretation. You. I appreciate I that.
Hi, Chris, in all due respect, are you, are you done with your comment period? I want to give you ample time to, to voice your opinion. I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to uh, cut you short. So please I'm continue done. if you wish. I'm done. Okay, next in line, I have uh, Mr. Uptegrove. Do you have a comment? No. Uh, uh, Ms. Deeroff, do you have a comment? The only thing I was going to do is thank a lot of people, which already Mrs. Hogan has done so, so I don't want to take up the board's time, but I'll veto her thank yous. All right, thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Okay. Next, we're going to go to uh, from from our board members who are going to be uh, not with us any longer. Uh, I'm going to have Brandon, Jill, then Mel. Uh, so, Mr. F uh, Brandon, you are up. Mr. Foose. All right. Thank you very much. Um, I have some comments, uh, some notes jotted down that I want to reference, um, but I'm going to try not to just read directly off of them. Um, it's been an honor to serve on the board for four years for the Boyertown Area School District. Uh, this, is a, this is a place that holds a special place in my heart. Um, this is my alma mater and my love for this community, um, the community where I was raised and my drive to serve the public um, are what brought me uh, what brought me here. And, um, and I've thoroughly enjoyed the past four years serving in, in that capacity. I continue to believe that public education is the most impactful investment in our local community, our children, and our future. Uh, over the past four years, I've chaired several committees. I've served on, I've served as the student liaison several times. Uh, I served as the vice president and then later as the president of the board. Um, my, my proudest accomplishment um, was something early in my tenure was helping to reduce the activity fees. I continue to believe that a well-rounded public education provides provide students with a variety of ways to learn and reasons to be excited or motivated to come to school each day. Uh, it was later in life that um, I was uh, diagnosed with ADHD, something that um, once, I, once I got my diagnosis, uh, became very clear to me some of the struggles that, that I was presented with earlier in life and how much um, staying involved and keeping myself very busy and structured uh, was important to my success at Boyertown. Um, and I encourage any others who struggle with the same uh, to find ways to continue to, um, to persevere and get the most out of their, their education during their, uh, their time in this district. I wanted to highlight a couple of things um, that I also think were, um, were accomplishments of the, the past four years, including maintaining all of our student programs, implementing and growing the best program, giving our life skills students real world experience with local businesses, uh, expanding our dual enrollment program. Um, we included the courses at Harrisburg and continue to, uh, to add courses that, that seem appropriate and that our students might find interesting uh, that could also be, uh, be great avenues for them to pursue after uh, their time at Boyertown. We constructed the long overdue softball upgrades, which helped bring us into Title IX compliance, but also just gave our softball team um, much deserved space of their own with uh, much better accommodations than, than previous. Uh, we've grown our pre-K program with no budgetary impact. I think that's an outstanding accomplishment. Uh, we hired our district's first woman superintendent who I believe is doing an extraordinary job and I hope uh, continues to serve in that role um, for many years to come. We've nearly eliminated our structural deficit that has plagued the district for years. We renegotiated a fair teacher's contract uh, we increased the mental health support and services, um, including bringing the Safe to Say program to Boyertown. And we brought our cyber charter back in, back in house for a substantial cost savings uh, that is also growing enrollment. Uh, we've, the, the last item uh, to highlight is that we've maintained our status as a top academic district in the region. Southeastern Pennsylvania is, um, is an incredibly competitive uh, area. We, there are some top schools in Montgomery County that are ranked in, um, in the county, the state, and in the country. And we, um, we go toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. And I think that we provide a lot of things um, that, that maybe they don't. But we can also learn from, from some of the surrounding areas. But I'm, I'm very proud of what our district has accomplished. 
I'd also like to acknowledge that I've worked alongside three separate student uh, superintendents um, and 15 or so colleagues on the board over the past four years. And until this, uh, yeah, sorry. Um, I think it's important that, uh, that we recognize that we routinely see, um, we see turnover on the board, we see turnover in administration, um, but where we see very little turnover is with our staff, our teachers, um, the cafeteria staff, the custodial staff. Um, we, we a lot of times see on the personnel agenda people that have been with the district for decades. And they're, they're truly the backbone um, of this district, of this community. And I think we owe them a debt of gratitude. I'm certainly grateful for all that they do and continue to do. Uh, while I was in board leadership, I pushed to make information more readily available for our meetings and more accessible, including the integration of timestamps in board docs so that specific topics can be quickly identified and referenced. I appreciate that we um, are streaming our meetings on YouTube and that they're uh, available quickly and can be easily navigated. And so to our, our community, especially our parents, please continue to hold this board accountable. Please continue to stay engaged. Please continue to demand transparency, integrity, and honest discussion. Uh, it's very important that we honor the local control of our schools and uh, that we continue to uphold the values and morals of our community for this district. Thank you for allowing me to serve and go Bears. Brandon, thank you very much. Ms. Denon, would you mind taking the next? Sure. Um, yes, I, I'm not going to repeat some of the things that um, Mr. Fu said, but I, if I could echo basically what he said, I would, I would um, agree with, with everything. And, and I'll take some of the things out that I was going to say, because he, he, he said those. So uh, it has been an honor and a privilege to serve on the Boyertown School Board for the past eight years. Uh, I've always tried to do what is best, what is in the best interest of all uh, students and the community. And I am proud of a few of the votes that we have taken. Um, I am proud to have voted for air conditioning in our schools, uh, to take over just to, to be on the board right when we were revamping the whole idea behind the renovation of the high school, um, to be part of the decisions regarding the new stadium and voting for girls volleyball. Um, and I advocated and voted for um, changes and additions to our curriculum, including financial literacy. And um, I think that is one of the things that um, I, when I came to the board, I started talking to uh, Dr. Woodard and then uh, Mr. Stout about the importance of financial literacy. And I think the administration has done an incredible job in, in devising curriculum that helps our students. And as Dr. Foley, I think Dr. Foley was the one who said, the kids didn't understand about insurance and it's, it's just vital. So I think that um, that is a wonderful thing that, that we have done for, for our uh, learning community. And also uh, the, the introduction and the acceptance of social emotional learning and the importance that it, it, it has in our school system. And um, I acknowledge, although some of my votes were unpopular with some groups, uh, I always strive to put kids first and acknowledge the needs of the greater community. Um, to the new board, I, I wish you well. Uh, I think that we, this, the outgoing board hopefully have left you in a better uh, financial position. And again, that took some very hard decisions on some, on some past boards. And I hope that um, things continue to go well and that we are not in, um, we are not in, continue to be in that structural deficit. And I just wanna say that I, I never thought we would still be in the midst of the pandemic, but um, we are. And this is this, as of today, this is where we are. And there, there will be, and I believe this, there will be an end to masks. There will be an end to quarantining and testing and an end to having to go to virtual school uh, and go back and forth between quarantining certain grades and, and shutting down um, grades or schools. 
I think that we all have a common goal to keep our students in schools and interacting with their teachers and enjoying the company of their peers and their friends. But I really truly believe that for this to happen, we must continue to wear masks in school. And more importantly, we must encourage um, our friends and others to get vaccinated and to have those conversations and to have a dialogue with people. I truly believe, and I think this da the data and the science supports this, that the only way out of this pandemic is to get vaccinated. Um, it's my hope that the board and parents and the community will listen to the science and come together for the common good so we can continue in-person learning while not sacrificing the health of grandparents, our parents and our children. I do think that um, although we all have a choice in our, in our medical treatments, I think that in this particular case, where our common goal of having kids in school, I do think it is, it is part of, the, uh, of, a, of a common good and a shared effort that we all need to, to pitch in for the good of the community, not just for our students, but for um, those people in our community maybe who can't get vaccinated. And finally, I just would really like to thank the administration. I too am very, very proud that we were able to have our first female superintendent. I know that Mrs. Torshev was a superintendent in another school. I actually met um, her when I was substituting at Daniel Boone and, and got to know her a little bit there. And I just want to thank her for her incredible professionalism and um, her courage and dedication to parents. Um, Mr. Stout and Dr. Foley, uh, the, the same to you as well. I think that you truly, truly are dedicated uh, to, the, uh, to, to public education in general. And one thing that I always remember and, and other um, superintendents have said this, but I think Mrs. Torsha just said it very succinctly one time. And she said, look, I just wanna help kids learn and keep them safe. And that's where my heart is. And that's where my heart will always be. And I will make decisions based on that. And I just think that if you have a superintendent and that is, is her mantra, we can't go wrong. So I hope that um, the new board will, will find as I have done that Mrs. Torsha has made some very good decisions and to do everything that you can to support her um, during, during this, this difficult time of the pandemic. So again, thank you very much. It has been a pleasure. I'll continue going to the plays and the concerts and some of the sporting events. And um, it, again, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ms. Denon. All right, that brings us to you, Mel. Ms. McWerther, you are up. All right, thank you. Um, I have a lot of thoughts similar to Jill's and Brandon's and um, and I echo a lot of their thoughts, so I'm not going to repeat all of that. Um, I just want to say thank you to um, everyone that's associated with our school district, um, especially the administration that I've worked so closely with over the past two years. And I have learned so much about governance of our, of our school, distri school district and about how our school district works. And I wish success to the district and to the, the incoming board in the future as your success is our community's success. Um, I would also like to just to take a moment um, to, to talk about our social emotional learning and the anxiety and depression um, that we've all been feeling or many people have been feeling, um, especially during the pandemic. Um, and this is something that we've talked about on the school board as well as in our um, leadership meetings. And it's something that's important to me. So I just wanted to share. I have dealt with anxiety and depression all of my life. Um, even when deciding to run for school board, I worried if my anxiety would be an issue. And um, finally decided not to worry about it until it became an issue, um, which it hasn't. And that's one of the tools that I use in my arsenal um, of dealing with anxiety and depression. Um, to those of you who are in our community that are suffering from anxiety and depression, please, please, please take care of yourselves physically and emotionally um, with exercising, eating well, and reaching out to those who can help you, the medical and mental health professionals, 
family, friends, teachers, the list goes on. And for those of you who, who have been entrusted to listen, if you have a situation where you feel that someone is a danger to themselves or others, please reach out to the Safe to Say program. Um, this past year and eight months have been difficult. Um, so I just want everyone to please take care of themselves. And I just, again, many thanks to everyone for uh, this opportunity to serve Boyertown, the Boyertown community on our school board. Thank you. Thank you, Mel, for all your help this year, too. All right, that brings it to me. I was actually going to make some comments on, on masking. Now, I don't know if anyone believes it or not, but I'm not a mask guy. If you look back to last year, I was one of the outspoken board members that was willing to challenge the whole idea of masks. But as far as I know it, right now, masks keep kids in school, and that's our main objective. I think our main challenge, and, I, and I'm, I've had conversations with, with, with those in the community that uh, you know we're, we're dealing with a certain parameter that we actually don't have control of. Our quarantine rules, our, our, our contact tracing, and all the other parameters are what we're up against. Now, I don't know if I believe in the mask, whatever. But all I do know is that we just finished up the first trimester of this year for, for our, 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 our younger grades. And that's a good thing. We just finished our, uh, I guess we're into our second quarter for the upper grades. And that's a good thing. We have sports. I went to a performance at uh, Middle School East on Friday. That's a good thing. We're, we're, we're trying to do the best that we can. Be patient. If anyone has ideas, please. <laughs> let's get let's have at it. Let's have some discussion. So I'm looking forward to having these discussions to figure out what are we going to do. But our main objective at the moment is to keep these kids in school and, and, and keep some kind of normalcy as much as we can. And oh yeah, let's keep them safe too. We don't want sick kids. That's not a good thing either. So that's all I'm going to say right now as far as masking goes. I'm not a mask guy. But right now I'm forced to be. Next, I would like to thank the three board members. Now, all three of you, I, we, I butt heads with you big time. We've had some heated discussions, but we've had good discussions. I've enjoyed our discussions. You've helped me think. You've made me a better board member because of our differences. As a parent, thank you very much for your service to our district and you guys have my utmost respect and I wish you well and thank you so, so much. Next, because I have to, to stay within the three minute limit also. So I, I had a lot of other things that I wanted to say about this year, serving as board president, serving as a board member in general, working with administration, all that stuff. But you know what? It all comes down to where we are today. Uh, and you know, of course, I was going to take time to have this monumental speech or whatever it may be. But it, what I want to share with you is a simple text that I got from my sister. I don't know if anybody knows, I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland, which is a war zone at the moment. And I don't get to see my family that much, but we do communicate through text. So I'm just going to share a text. And it's probably a generic statement that everyone's going to see on Facebook or whatever sent through the, for Thanksgiving. But this is what I want uh, to leave my statement with tonight. It, it says my Thanksgiving week to-do list. And these are the things that I forget about and it takes a stupid text to remind me. I want to count my blessings. Let go of what I can't control. Practice kindness. Listen to my heart and be thankful for what God has given me. And above all, just breathe. So I'm, I'm hoping that our Boyertown community can just take the next week to enjoy their families, to take a breath and just enjoy each other and be kind. And on that note, I just would like to, to thank everybody for this year 
for the opportunities that have been given to us and to bless our children. So on that note, we're gonna move on to the rest of our agenda. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Brings Happy us to announcements. Okay. So our announcements for um, upcoming meetings will be that the December 7th meeting will be the school board reorganization meeting at seven o'clock at the Boyertown Education Center. December 14th will be our board of directors meeting at seven o'clock PM. And then we will meet again um, January 11th and the 25th. Thank you very much, Ms. Torsha. Next in line, I'm waiting for a motion to adjourn. Motion from Foos. Mr. Foos. Hogan seconds. And a second from Ms. Hogan. Thank you, everyone. This meeting is adjourned. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving. Bye.